Minecraft building has changed a lot, and definitely for the better. No more individually placing oak planks, no more, dang, how did they do that? Because Minecraft building nowadays is easy. Well, easier. In this video, I'm going to go over all the things I've learned throughout the years of Minecraft building and show you how you can reach new heights with your builds. Because becoming a builder can sound really intimidating and daunting, but once you know these six steps, you're going to be well on your way to mastering it. And so, first things first, you're going to want to install Axiom. It's the building mod that has revolutionized building, and if you can't install Axiom, maybe you're on Bedrock Edition, don't worry, stick around. But I'm sure you've heard about every creator talking about Axiom at least once. It's a new tool called Axiom. 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 And Axiom. Axiom. Yeah. Everyone loves this mod. The reason this mod is so powerful is because it simplifies world edit. It makes your hand a debug stick. It allows you to replace blocks effortlessly, find color palettes easier. Heck, you can literally paste in images into your Minecraft world. Hey Steve, check out this build I made. Sure, uh, okay. What the f***? Of course, it does way more than that. That's basically the Sparknotes version of Axiom, but that's why I literally made a two-hour comprehensive tutorial for Axiom going over everything. By the way, you don't need to watch that if you want to be good at building. That's really if you want to get into the absolute nitty-gritty, all the details. However, I do hear some of you saying, Ash, I'm on Bedrock Edition. All right, I don't play Java. I can't get this, this, this Axiom thing. And yeah, you're absolutely right. But there's been a new feature called the Editor Mode in Bedrock, which is sort of a simplified version of Axiom. It can't do everything that Axiom can, but it's pretty similar. I don't discourage building on the platform you want to. I'm going to try and make this tutorial as inclusive as possible to the platform you play on. I just simply encouraged exploring Java building tools because they really are super powerful. With all that being said, you should definitely be mastering Axiom's builder tools. It does not matter what level of building you're at. Heck, it doesn't even matter if you build at all. When you open your instance with Axiom for the first time, you'll notice this little shape to the right of your hotbar. This is the builder slot, and obviously you can get to this just by scrolling to it, or you can hit zero on your keyboard. And when you're hovering over the slot and you hold left alt, you can scroll up and down to a bunch of different tools. Now these seven tools I think are essential to modern Minecraft building. Let's quickly go over the builder tools. Now this one is the move tool by default, that little plus sign. And as you can see, if you left click, you get your first point, And if you right click, you get your second point, And you can move things up and down to the right and left and anywhere you want. And then once you're good, you can either cancel with left click or confirm it with right click. Or if you middle click, you can move your selection. And there we go. Now we confirm it. Look at that. We have floating sand. Incredible. The clone tool is the exact same thing, except it copies instead of moves things. The stack tool is basically the clone tool, except it creates vertical and horizontal translations. And uh, yeah, you can get some interesting things going there. The smear tool is just like the stack tool, except when you smear things up and you start to translate them in multiple directions directions, you can see that it smears the selection, kind of like a paintbrush. And there we go, it uses to create stairs all the time. The extrude tool is a little bit different in that it is going to extrude like blocks when I right click, and you can also do the opposite by left clicking. And what this is doing is it's looking at all the similar blocks on that same vertical or horizontal axis, and it is going to expand or shrink it. So as you can see, it is not going to expand the dirt and grass, because those aren't the same block, but it will will expand all the sand on this y-axis, and if we go over here to the side, boom, you can see that it is going to expand just like that. Also, if you make a change to your world and you just don't like it, well, you can hit Control z and it'll completely undo the action. The Erase tool allows you to erase connected blocks, so kind of like the Extrude tool, it looks at all the similar blocks in there. If you right-click, it's going to erase all those connected blocks. And then if we hit the sand here, you can see that it has a limit so that it's not going to erase all the sand in the area. And and then you can also create these erase boxes and you can middle click to extend the selection and then once you're ready you just hit delete and it'll do that for you. Finally we have the symmetry tool and I do a much better explanation of this on my comprehensive axiom tutorial but essentially this is a center point and when you are going to set up these symmetry points so let's make it so it rotates around that point it is going to make everything around it symmetrical and there we go you can see that around that center point it is going to 
rotate it for us. And we can also change the mode. So if we don't want it to rotate, we can do it with a flip. So anything on this side is going to be flipped onto that side. And there we go. This mode is really useful if you're like creating an archway. So, you know, you can see I'm going to create like a little bridge right here. And you can flip on any axis. So that was the X axis. We can also do the Z axis or the Y axis and it works in just the same way. And we can also enable multiple axes. So if I want the X and the Z and I want it to rotate around, then we can create circles really fast. So watch how fast I create this circle, this, this very bad circle. Oh, it's already done. So yeah, those are the builder tools. And honestly, for how powerful they are, <laughs> it is really easy to learn. That's only the tip of the iceberg with what Axiom can do, but I really do believe that these are vital tools to learning Java Minecraft building. And of course, if you're on Bedrock, well, don't worry because there is the editor mode, and I'm not going to go too in-depth on it because there are other videos on it, including all the builder tools and everything in the editor UI. Now, enough Axiom. What if I told you that coloring your builds is super easy now? If you understand color theory, that's obviously going to be helpful, but let me help you out. If you're like me and the last time you took an art class was in middle school. First of all, creating block gradients has never been easier. Using this website called Hueblocks, you can generate block gradients with just a couple clicks. Want to see what a gradient from red concrete powder to purple terracotta would look like? There you go. Let's say you want to have the best gradient from gray to green. Well, you don't have to select blocks. You can also select colors on this website. So any gradient you can imagine can be generated here. Additionally, if you are an avid user of world edit, well, you can use this plugin called easy edits to save gradients and quickly apply them to surfaces later. If you want a better tutorial, I'd recommend checking out this one by Meg Ray. She's a phenomenal builder and can explain easy edits a lot better than me. And if you really want to pick out blocks yourself when building, but don't like scrolling through the creative menu, well in Axiom's editor UI, if you hit right shift, what you're going to want to do first is make a box selection. And if you want to learn that, it's covered in my Axiom tutorial, but essentially make a box selection and then we just hit enter. And if we come up here to operations, we hit generate color fields. And what this is going to do is it's going to generate a color field using every full block in Minecraft and it's going to make all these gradients here. So if you want to see what's close to blue terracotta, well then here it is. The closest block to it looks to be warped hyphae. And this is a really, really helpful way to visualize what kind of blocks are going to work in your build. And if you look over there at my big old robot thing, I use this exact method to understand what kind of blocks go with orange and terracotta. Look, right in here. And if you're still lost on color, and I wouldn't blame you because color is such a complex topic and we could be here talking for hours about it. Well, I have two resources down in the description that I'd highly recommend you check out. One by Henry Paca and one by The Loosest of Gooses, and they really, really are experts on the topic, so definitely check out their stuff. Okay, but let's say you're fine with color and you've got some cool building tools that you want to make use of, but you just don't know what to build. Well, don't worry, it happens to everyone. And that's where concept art comes in. And I don't just want to tell you that concept art exists, I want to show you how to use it effectively. Personally, I'd recommend Pinterest when trying to find inspiration. You create inspiration boards, post your own builds, and this platform also grabs images from places like Instagram or Reddit. So it really gives you a wide place of inspiration to choose from and places to go back when you want to build in that specific style. I like to use concept art to get ideas for color palettes and find unique designs that I might be able to make in Minecraft. But of course, there's right and wrong ways to use concept art. First and foremost, copying someone's concept art and building it in Minecraft is, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's a big misconception. See, copying concept art and claiming it as your own, well, that's obviously bad. But if you're copying it and learning how to build in Minecraft from it, now that, that is awesome. Art is just a big amalgamation of ideas and concept art is something builders and artists all around the world use. Building without concept art is kind of like drawing a squirrel, but you've only ever seen a squirrel in real life and you know, you're kind of just using images in your head. And yes, if you're really skilled, that can work. But when you're just getting started building, it's by and large not necessary at all. Like I said, using reference is something everyone does. Additionally, with Axiom, we now have the ability to paste concept art into our world. So let's go ahead and pull up a concept I used for this build right here. Now again, this is covered in my big Axiom tutorial, but if we open the editor UI by hitting right shift, we come up here to the annotation tool. It looks like this clipboard. We come over here to the image one. Now what I'm using here in the URL is an image 
your upload. And the reason I do this is because these links stay forever, or at least a very long time, and we also can't upload files directly from our computer. So now here I am on Imgur, and what I'm going to do is drop an image that I downloaded right here. And look at that, it's Divine Beast Vaughn and Boris from Breath of the Wild. I hope that's not a surprise to you that I use this as inspiration. <laughs> now what you're not going to do is you're not going to copy this URL right here, you're going to right click here and hit open image in new tab. And then there we are. Once you've opened the image in a new tab, you can copy the URL and then paste that in here in the image URL. And what you're going to see is that it is there. And look at that. This one has transparency, which is pretty cool. And of course, you can move this around anywhere and do whatever you'd like with it. So now it's just here in our world. Look at that. And you're <laughs> definitely going to notice some similarities like there and there. And here you can see the feet that you shoot with the bomb arrows is, is right down there. So yeah, there's a lot of similarities here. <laughs> and if you haven't played The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the one where this Divine Beast is from, then you should go play that game right now. I'm talking to a very specific person right now and you know who you are. Another reason having concept art in your world is useful is, well, I'm building Echoes of Wisdom in Minecraft and so I just put the map on the ground. So then I can come over here with all these blocks and I can literally just outline it like so. There's other methods to using concept art and I just showed one way, but if you want to learn another way from a real artist, a real game dev, then you should go check out this video from my friend Amiander. She like actually studied art in college, so um, definitely a much more trustworthy source than me. You know, some random guy you clicked on on YouTube. All right, so you're almost ready to build, but I merely taught you tools and tricks. What about how to build? I mean, that is what this video is titled. Besides that being like a completely loaded question, the simplest answer is practice. Building is an art form and there's absolutely no one right way or wrong way to do it. But the best tip I can give you is to think of Minecraft like a painting. We should never approach a block and say, well, I can't use that because it's wood. Because you know what? You're using strip birch logs in your sandcastle and it's going to look great because the color is similar enough. If you want to be good at building, you have to forget about the contextual definition behind a block and just look at its color because, as you can see, when we go really far out, a birch plank starts to really look a lot like sand. At the end of the day, all a block is, is pixels. That's literally all it is. So, no, you don't have to build your Minecraft roof out of wood or stone every time, you can use any block you want. So once you get out of the mindset that Minecraft building has to be realistic, and more into the mindset that it's art, it's painting, it's digital media design, it's photography, it's, it's anything you want it to be, not what you think it has to be, then you're going to become good at building no matter what. This mountain here, for example, uses a lot of different blocks to achieve a smooth look. Like here, we have chiseled tough at the bottom, we have smooth stone at the top. Now those blocks, when you look at them up close, it looks maybe a little weird, but you're not intended to look at this mountain from up close. You're intended to look at this from afar and see, oh, those blocks up there make the mountain look like it has sort of a highlight. Or let's look at this tree, for example. There are certain points where it's highlighted that things have been burned, and even smokers to combine the browns and the grays with that texture. And down at the bottom, we're using nether brick to show that there's a big shadow on this tree. And the same thing with this tree, where I'm using dark oak to show shadows, and then in points where maybe the sunlight hits, we're using brown concrete powder and things like granite and so you create this very cool effect where it looks like sunlight is kind of hitting the tree or let's look at this little divot here you can see that i'm using blocks to create shadows so right here on this underside we have a little bit of chiseled tough and then at points where it gets a little brighter we're using stone and cobblestone up here and when you look at this from afar you start to see it as a whole piece rather than its individual blocks here so look i could go on and on about block choice but i'm always happy to cover that on stream if you guys ever ask that question to me and there's also this great video by Snarple, who is one of my building inspirations, who covers this concept really well and goes a little more in depth, so I would highly, highly recommend that one. The final thing I want to share with you is that Minecraft building is a speedrun. Hear me out. You see, the faster you can do mundane tasks like building a wall, then the faster you're going to be able to do more complex stuff and learn things about building. You see, the reason I'm so pro Axiom is because it enables you to do things really fast, and without even thinking about it, I'm just doing what I know needs to be done, and people are just absolutely blown away by how fast you can go, really. And so, like I said, the faster you can do simple things, the faster you're going to be able to practice things you're not as good at. Like for me, I'm not super good at texturing. It's one of those things that I just have trouble getting the right blocks. But what I am really good at is shaping builds. And so like over here, you can see that I had so much fun shaping this build, but I'm definitely going to struggle with its palette a lot. But since I was able to build this in 10 minutes, it's going to make it so I have a lot more time in my life to color stuff. So yes, Minecraft building is an absolute speedrun, and this is a totally shameless plug, plug Axiom. I mean, look, you can do 
replace mode. I can I can reach infinitely. I can reach infinitely with this mod. You know how annoying it is to use a debug stick on walls? Well, not anymore because I can just use my hand using Axiom. Or how about the fact that you can only save nine hotbars in Minecraft's creative menu? Well, I have good news because with Axiom you can save infinite hotbars. Or let's say you're building with a bunch of different stairs and slabs and you want to replace them all at once. Well, check this out. I can turn on this thing in the toolbox called type replace and with it on, boom, I can just replace all those block states with the, the chosen block that I'm replacing with. So yeah, there are so many things that are exciting about building in Minecraft in 2025. And so maybe I'll admit I was exaggerating a bit when Minecraft building is a speedrun. I think you should spend time on your builds and meticulously craft it to how you want. But as you'll hear any creative say, practice makes perfect, so just learn to leverage the tools that you have available to you, and in no time you'll be creating absolutely stunning art. With that being said, you may have noticed I've left a lot of things in the description, resources for you to use. Building, it's a hard thing, but I've tried here to make it feel a little more approachable. With that being said, I couldn't cover everything in full detail, and that's why the resources are there. If you want to watch my comprehensive Axiom tutorial, that's on the left there, and if you want to watch how I got good at using Axiom in just 30 days, then that video is on the right. See ya, and thanks for watching.